the 2017 Bentley Continental GTV8. Now, this is Bentley's big grand touring coupe that I'm sure you're all very familiar with in many ways, but it's still a car that I've been wanting to review for a while, and I'm just going to talk to you more about it today. I'm Jay, and welcome to uh, the latest episode of uh, Carbuzz Unboxing Reviews, and yes, this is the uh, latest Continental GTV8. You see these things literally everywhere in the lakes of Los Angeles and Beverly Hills, so it's not an extremely rare, but it's still a really cool car nonetheless. And I also want to thank Los Gatos Luxury Cars for uh, letting me come on down and uh, film this today. So, all right, let's give you uh, some uh, brief history of the uh Bentley Continental. Uh, obviously, this is a name that goes way back to, I believe, the 1920s and 30s uh, within the, uh, the the Bentley brand. But this current uh, iteration of the uh, Continental, uh, it first arrived in, believe it or not, in 2003. And it was the, the first car launched um, from Bentley under uh, VW's ownership. Remember, Bentley is owned by the VW Group. In fact, it's been owned by BW, or VW since 1998. So the Continental that you see here, this was a, a pretty big deal for uh, uh, for Bentley at the time. It, it, it signaled a brand new era that still continues very, very successfully till uh, till this day. And before I go any further here, let's start up the engine. I'll be back in a moment, and we're going to talk more about that. Right, so that was the sound of, remember, this is the V8, not the W12 model uh, of the Continental. This is the 4-liter twin-turbo V8, total 500 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 487 pound-feet of torque uh, available beginning at 1,700 RPM. And power is sent to all four wheels through an 8-speed automatic transmission. There, there is a 40-60 uh, power-to-rear uh, torque split, so you do feel uh, the power going to the rear wheels a little bit more, but having all-wheel drive, especially uh, for better uh, uh cornering and, uh, and tight corners uh, and better overall road grip is very much appreciated. Now this is actually the same engine found in the Audi S6, S7 and the S8. Again, all part of the uh, VW uh, Group uh, parent company uh, right there. Now there is also the uh, GT V8S. Again, same engine as this, but with a little more horsepower, 521 horsepower. Costs a little bit more, but um, I don't know. I think for a lot of people, 500 horsepower is more than uh, good enough. Now, this exterior that you see here, this is painted a Rubino red. It costs an extra $5,715. Again, that's just for the paint. And what's cool with a lot of Bentley is, in fact, every Bentley is that you can really customize these things to whatever your budget uh, really allows. Uh, a lot of exclusive paint colors, uh, leather hide, interiors, wood veneers. It's just Again, you're talking about a Bentley here. It's right on par with, you know, Rolls Royce. So the people who buy these cars, they want them to be unique. Now, the uh, Continental uh, GT V8 comes standard with 20-inch uh, six tri-spoke wheels. Uh, this one actually has the uh, optional 21-inch 10-spoke uh, propeller alloys. Those cost $5,785. Mm -hmm. Now, what I really like here are these figure eight uh, style stainless steel tailpipes. Just sort of a really, really cool look right there, how they're just uh, especially integrated right into the rear bumper there. And as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of nice chrome trim all throughout the car surrounding the uh, rear taillights as well. You also have uh, standard by Xenon projector headlamps with a, with a signature LED daytime running lights as well. Now, something else you should know about the uh, Continental here is that it rides on VW's D1 platform. Now, believe it or not, this is the same architecture that underpins the likes of the VW Phaeton, which uh, is actually not even built anymore, but uh, it was a really big deal about, well, in the early 2000s, just uh, when this car came out. Now, this is all the, the same platform that underpins the, uh, the Bentley Flying Spur, which, for all intents and purposes, is the four-door sedan version of the uh, Continental. So... You like the Continental here, but the rear seat space is just not big enough for you, go for the Flying Spur. I have also done unboxing reviews of that car as well. Be sure to check them out. All right, under the hood, this is that 4-liter twin-turbo V8 here. Uh, performance, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.6 seconds. Top speed, 190 miles per hour. Fuel economy, 15 miles per gallon in the city, 25 on the highway, and a combined 19. This vehicle weighs just over 
5,000 pounds, and yet there is not a gas guzzler tax, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing I can tell you straight off that I do not like about this engine is that it's got this plastic covering all over it. A lot of automakers are doing that these days, and I just think it, it, it kind of ruins the look. I want to see more mechanicals to it instead of just a big chunk of plastic on top. Just a personal opinion, and I don't think I'm alone on that. Step inside, and um, uh, if you've never been in a modern Bentley before, I really encourage you just to do it, or uh, go to your local uh, Bentley dealership. There's a lot of them throughout the United States and Europe, and just give it a try, because everything here is just... This is modern day uh, craftsmanship, coach building from a mainstream automaker, and it's just a spectacular here. They call this interior camel. Go figure. It's like a light, uh, like a like tan color. Yeah, this is what they call Elliott cloth headlining. And there's a total of 17 leather combinations and also a selection of veneers, including burr walnut, madrona, which is the one you see here, piano black, tamo ash, and dark stained madrona as well. Now, take a look at the rear seats. Yes, that's only for two people back there. You're not going to get three. That's just fine. A little tight uh, in terms of uh, overall legroom. Again, this is just a shortened version of the D1 platform, which was originally developed uh, for a big sedan. And none of this is fake wood or, or cheap plastics. All those uh, switches are they're metal, real wood trim, hand put together. It's just uh, literally artwork, in my opinion. Yeah, that uh, tri-spoke uh, steering wheel right there. Again, more wood. And overall, the, the, the layout, it's fully modern, especially for a car that dates back, its, it's guts go back, rather, to 2003. Now, however, uh, the first generation Continental GT was from 2003 until 2011. This is actually the second generation that also came out uh, in the same year, 2011. Uh, but again, it still rides on the same platform as the first generation. So basically, all VW did, or rather Bentley did, was just give the car uh, a significant update. But the exterior and interior look very, very similar. And of course, you all uh, you have all these modern features here. You have regular uh, infotainment system. Now, this is actually very similar to what you see on most modern uh, Volkswagens. And in fact, though, if you compare this infotainment system here to, let's say, what you're getting on even the new Audi A4, I did a review of that. Check it out too. Uh, this system looks kind of ancient, I have to say. And that's another thing I want to bring up here is that despite being redesigned for 2011, it was given an update in uh, 2014, it's time for this car to get a replacement. Ah, and that was nice too, having that uh, adjustable uh, suspension there. It's not like you're going to go off-roading in this thing, but you don't want to scrape the bottom against a curb or anything like that, so it's good to have. You also have this uh, multi-zone automatic climate control. Of course, you've got your cup holders. That's standard. Again, all that's wood, hand stitching. The contrast stitching there actually costs an extra $1,980. And the veneer door and uh, rear quarter inserts, those are an extra $1,250. The Madrona hide I mentioned to you, that's $1,360. And that wood hide three-spoke steering wheel, that costs an extra $1,245. Ventilated front seats with a massage function, $1,070. The, even the uh, the embroidered uh, Bentley emblems, $670. So, yeah, the, the, the features out of fast and stuff like that isn't standard. So let's talk some safety here. Now you got the standard uh, brake pad wear indicator, all your typical airbags, electronic parking brake and drive away assist, speed sensitive power steering, front and rear anti-roll bars, electronic stability control, anti-lock brakes, traction assistance, electronic brake force distribution, hydraulic brake assistance, drag torque control, continuous dumping control, and uh, aqua plane detection too, as well as a rear view camera and a tire pressure monitoring system. So how does this drive? Well. 
like a proper Grand Tour. I gotta tell you, acceleration is brisk and smooth, but it's not a supercar. Let's be clear about that. This is all about comfort as opposed to straight out performance. If you want all out performance, you can go for the Continental GT3. I hope to do that in a future unboxing review as well. Uh, because that has the uh, a more powerful engine. Um, and because this one actually weighs less than the W12 powered version, uh, the V8 is more fun to hurl down twisty and windy rows, and you can actually feel the front wheels working hard to get you out of tight corners. Clearly, it's a sign that belly engineers are awesome at what they do. Now, something else that you should also take note of, the uh, the W12 uh, version of this car. It goes from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds uh, and has a top speed of 198 miles per hour. Now, again, compared to what this car can do, 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, top speed of 190 miles per hour, that's not b that big of a difference. And in this case, you're getting a lighter car that's more fun to drive. So why would anyone go for the heavier and only slightly more powerful and slightly faster W12? Well, in my opinion, it's probably just to say that I'm driving around a car with a W12, which is a very, very unique type of engine exclusive to uh, the Volkswagen Group at the moment. All right, so uh, what's up with the competition? Well, not much. And they come from, well, just one brand. Rolls-Royce, you have the Rolls-Royce Dawn Convertible uh, and the Rolls-Royce Wraith Coupe, which is the same car, uh, but the uh, Coupe and Convertible versions. You can also get a Coupe and Convertible version of this, the Continental uh, GT V8, also the W12. But personally, I like the Coupe, uh, the one that we see here with its uh, really cool fastback styling. I, I, I think that's what really gives the the car its you know very distinctive look and um yeah, I would just go for the coupe if that was uh, if that was my choice. Now, both those Rolls Royces I just mentioned, they start at well over three hundred thousand dollars, and believe it or not, um, this one right here is the cheapest Continental you can get. Base price one hundred ninety eight thousand five hundred dollars, but um, nobody is going to drive away with a Continental GTV eight for little less than two hundred thousand dollars. It just doesn't happen. Why? Because you're going to want to add on a bunch of features, like I mentioned. Uh, that this car has. So this car right here, with all the options that I mentioned, um, grand total, $224,830. So uh, yeah, a little under a quarter of a million bucks, which is actually not bad value considering you're getting a Bentley, you're getting 500 horsepower, uh, you're getting all that craftsmanship that uh, I, you know the English are very well known for. And of course, because like I mentioned, this is a Grand Tour and not a supercar, uh, the inside, it's just very comfortable. You can see from the driver's seat, the front passenger seat, uh, ideal seating positions no matter what. And even with the cargo space you see here, uh, this is 12.6 cubic feet of trunk space. It's, yeah, this is a big ass trunk. Remember, this was originally a sedan platform, so you're gonna get the benefits of that, such as having a big trunk. And what's great about a car like the Continental, whether it's the V8 or the uh, W12 version, you can daily drive this thing. Uh, it, get, it has plenty of space for a lot, a lot of stuff here. Now, yes, the rear seat's a little tight, no big deal, but not everybody needs rear seats. They're not going to put people back there. Even if they do, it's going to be for a very limited time. And looking at this uh, front end here, just taking another look, you have that really cool signature, uh, the, the mesh grill that Bentley does. Uh, a lot of people have actually been saying uh, Lincoln is sort of copying that these days with this new Continental and the just revealed uh, Next Generation Navigator. And I kind of agree, but this is really a, a signature Bentley look that I really, really dig. I also really take these big 21-inch wheels. Uh, I would definitely spend the extra money to go for them. It just gives the car even better presence. And I just love that fastback look. It's, ugh. Oh. I, I, I think this car's proportions are just perfect the way they are. I would not change a thing. However, like I mentioned er earlier, uh, it's time for Bentley to completely redesign the Continental. Um... One of the things, you know, I, I I keep complimenting here about it, though, what I do like is that because of this car's uh, reduced weight from the V8, it does a pretty good job of behaving like a lighter and nimbler car. But what don't I like, again, 
it's aging fast here, and the V8 it doesn't quite have that same angry, badass sound of, let's say, for example, its AMG competitors. Um, this one, is, this engine is definitely more reserved, and I think Bentley should have uh, reconsidered this, or really think about this long and hard for the next generation Continental. And yeah, this car, like I said, it's out of date. If you go to, say, the new Audi RS7, and you compare these two side by side, very different. Uh, obviously, the uh, RS7 is a big four-door coupe, um, you just see this car's age uh, very, very much. But overall, if you're looking for a Bentley and you got over $200,000 to spend, go for the V8. You really don't need the W12. But I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in my next unboxing review.